12 points separate us and Lorenzo Baldessari. 12 points separate us and winning the Moto2 title. Hello there everyone and welcome to the climax of the Moto2 season. It's part 23 of our MotoGP 2019 career mode. And today we go to the last two GPs of the season at Malaysia and at Valencia to finish off what has been a fantastic, in my opinion, Moto2 season. And we have definitely still got something to fight for. We could well finish third at the end of this episode. In fact, we could end up finishing fourth if we have such a terrible episode of Marcel Schrotter as an absolute cracker. But if we win both of these races and Baldessari finishes second in one and third in the other, we will win the Moto2 Championship. Of course, if Baldessari wins this Malaysia Grand Prix and we finish sort of low top 10, he will secure the championship. So we have a big task. Basically, we need to go and win both races today at Malaysia and at Valencia. Now, last time, mate, we really mucked it up, to be quite honest. We didn't have a great race at Mategi. Uh, we were basically put off by Marcel Schrotter. Uh, we recovered to P8, but Baldessari won the race, and that was not the best result whatsoever. And then in Phillip Island, we led, and we fell off. And luckily, it was a bad day for Lorenzo Baldessari. But just imagine, if we'd have finished top of that pile and Baldessari would have finished fifth, this championship race would have been, oh, oh, so close. It would have been within a few points. So we've got a lot of work today to do at Malaysia and Valencia. But strap yourself in, it's going to be a cracker. Here we go, a bit of drama already. It's wet for the third practice here at Malaysia. So that means if it was dry in the first two sessions, that automatically we're not going to be through to Q1. Uh, sorry, to Q2. So we might have to take part in Q1. So what we're going to do, uh, we'll set a few laps and just see where that puts. And luckily it was wet throughout the weekend. That's not a bad time, is it? Seven seconds quicker than anybody else. Yeah, I haven't put it on the easy difficulty. Calm down. Uh, it seems everybody else wants to go out in the session early, and it was obviously wet, so I thought, oh, I'll wait till the end. And luckily, with five minutes to go, the rain had stopped, which made the track a lot less slippy, evidently, uh, and a lot quicker. So all that we've got to hope is that it's been wet for the whole of the weekend so far. Which it has. Thank goodness for that. So we are into Q2. Uh, I don't think we're quite going to take pole by 7 seconds, but if we take pole by any margin, I'm quite happy. So it is wet again for Q2. Interesting. Hmm, very interesting. It's all about getting out there at the right time. That was proven definitely uh, in the last session. The usual folk, though, into Q2. Brad Binder, Lecciona, Corsi and Locatelli getting in from the Q1 gang. But yeah, you've got your likes of Baldessari, Schrotter, Navarro in there. No surprise, really, there. Let's see how we get on. I Really, front row is what we need, at least. Right, so it's a damp track again, but it's certainly not wet, as you can see. It's just damp from, obviously, a downpour earlier on. But, yet again, the AI have only set times of 2.22s. I don't know if that's a glitch or whatever, because I certainly haven't changed difficulty. Uh, so don't get piping at me in the comments. But very odd. I mean, we might be a lot slower uh, in this session. I don't know. But 7 seconds quicker in FP3. And I'd suggest the track's pretty similar uh, to what it is now. So we're going to stay out there for the full six minutes. Uh, I can only think perhaps it's a glitch that when we're not out there, the AI struggles. So, I mean, as you can see, we're already six tenths quick. So I'm going to stay out there the whole session. Hopefully the AI give us a bit more of a challenge. Because if we're going to win this championship, I want to win it, I want to win it fair and square. Right, it's going to be a very quick lap here again. About seven seconds quick. I'm just interested in our, our uh, rival Baldessari is just behind us. Now, I don't think we can check. No, we can't check while we're out here, the race director. I'm just wondering where he's slotted in. It seems weird as I say that we're that much quicker than anybody else. But as I say, I'm going to stay out there till the end. I'm going to let Baldessari through. This lap's going to be off. Uh, I'm just going to see where he's just placed himself. P7. So obviously he's just, he's just come out of the pit. So that exercise was a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> well, we didn't improve on that time, but amazingly nobody else did either. I think the race will tell if we're on an easy difficulty or not. I certainly haven't changed it, but it just seems odd that the AI are so slow here. But we're going to take it. It's pole, whether it was by, you know, not a, a thousandth of a second or by 6.7 seconds indeed. Uh, but Tom Luty starts second. There's a place between myself and Baldessari. And if the race were to end like this, uh, that would be pretty good for our championship hopes. Hello and welcome to the exotic Sepang International Circuit where a new Moto2 class race is about to start. The skies over the track are clear of clouds and the latest weather reports forecast temperatures in line with the seasonal average. So, it's actually clear on Sunday, which isn't great for us because we haven't had any running in the clear. But we are on pole, which is a positive, definitely a positive. It's It's gone the other way before where we've had dry running and then it's been wet. I think I'd rather it be like this 
uh, than the other way around. But our right objective is a podium. Ultimately, our right objective should be the win and to beat Baldessari by as many points as possible. And I suppose, first off, to stay on the bike. Right, let's get out on track. We are on pole position for this Grand Prix. As you can see, we've got Luti second, Baldessari third, Marquez fourth, Schrotter fifth. Navarro's way out of it. It is a two-horse race now. Uh, it could very easily be a one-horse race if we muck up this race. But, you know, we mucked up in Phillip Island. Should never uh, have fell off the bike. Shouldn't have pushed so hard. I regret that even now. But we lost points there. Now it's time in these final two races to try our best to try and recover them. And if we don't, well, we don't. Over a season, Baldessari would have beaten us. But we've got two races here. Let's see if we can go and win the championship. Got to win this race, really. But we won't make any stupid Banzai moves trying to do so. We'll just try and have a composed start and get out in the lead. Green flags are waving. That means it's nearly time for the start. The lights are on. Here at Sepang. And we are away for the Sepang Grand Prix. Oh, we had a bit of struggle on traction there at the start. But it's not a terrible start. Our teammate Navarro has had a really good getaway. But Tom Lutie has just gone well. He's gone off the track, basically. But at the first corner, I think we broke a little bit too late. But we've used Navarro. Uh, sorry, not Navarro. Tom Lutie as a bit of a break. And we're back up to second. Moving up the inside of Tom Lutie. Broke late, though, there. That's not something we usually do. And Baldessari's back ahead for now. There is uh, Lorenzo Baldessari in second. Tom Lute is at the top of the group. He's going to floor it through here. Something we can do a lot better than the AI, it seems. I don't think the AI are very good round here, to be honest. It's particularly through that corner that you can take a lot quicker than the AI think you can. But after Sector 1, we are still in P1 in this race. That's exactly what we need to go and win this title. The AI have just been... I don't get it. I, I, honestly, I haven't changed difficulty. I don't get it because the AI have been very off colour all weekend. I mean, look at the gap we've pulled to the, you know, to the other guys. We're not usually this much quicker, so it might must just be a case that the AI is slow around Malaysia. I don't remember this problem last year, but this is ridiculous. The the gap we're getting, but I'm not going to complain whatsoever. Just a bit weird and a bit confusing, I'd say. A very, very peculiar race. As long as we stay on the bike, we will take the win, and that's something I'll definitely take. However, obviously. In, Valencia, if we've got the same sort of advantage in practice, I'll have to move the AI difficulty up. But I think there must be an AI bug around here because I've noticed when we've gotten to the start-finish straight, there's been about five or six riders a lap crashing at the uh, right-hander, the penultimate uh, corner at the circuit, the one where Rossi and Mark has had, had their famous tangle a few years back in real life. And I'm just wondering whether... Everybody's taking a stupid line through there and going massively wide, I don't know, getting out on the gravel. I haven't really come into contact with anybody during that corner, so I wouldn't really know. Uh, I'll show you which corner I mean in just a minute uh, when we go around it, but I don't know. I'm presuming that people must be taking a weird line through there, but I'm talking, you know, probably half of the fielders seem to have crashed there throughout this five-lap race. So I'm wondering whether they're taking some stupid lines through the corner because to be 13 seconds ahead and funnily enough, Odendahl has just fell off again, but not at that specific corner this time, unless he's a massive amount behind, because we're just coming up to that corner now. But I wonder whether the AI are just taking silly lines, because we're certainly not three seconds ahead of anybody on pace. Uh, bear in mind, we've got that gap uh, to bald. Sorry, it's this corner here. They're either taking it way too quick and running out wide, uh, or something's going on. I'm not really sure what is going on. But, I mean, amazingly, even after dominating this race, we are still going to be behind Lorenzo Baldessari coming into the final race. At Valencia. Now the gap was, was it 12 points? I believe it was. It was 12 points at the start of the weekend. So we've got five points back on him, which means we're seven points ahead of him going into the final race. So we need Baldessari to finish third or lower. If we're going to go and win, there we go. Simone and Corsi just crashed. Uh, it's about that area I'd say that they're going to crash him. But we've got the win here, so that means, as I say, we need to beat, uh, to be fair, Baldessari's fastest lap wasn't all that bad. Uh, about 1.4 seconds back. Uh, so not too ridiculous, but the rest of the guys were just way too far back. Uh, as you can see, Alex Marquez <laughs> finishing a minute odd behind, so he must have fell off a ridiculous amount of times. But the championship now looks like this. There's so seven points between myself and Lorenzo Bald. Sorry, that now means it's only a two-horse race. Navarro now out of the championship battle. So we need to win the next race, and Bald, sorry, finishing third. Or in simple terms, outscore our rival by eight points. Let's see how we get on in the final race of the season. This sounds like a daft thing to be saying, but in good news, we're actually being beaten. <laughs> oh dear, I mean, that's just one lap we've done uh, on the soft. So I think we could probably go a bit quicker than that, but we usually do have a little bit of a gap 
uh, in practice sometimes. So I wouldn't worry about that. But finally, the AI back to their best here in Valencia. We've got a real battle on our hands against Baldessari. Right, so session one goes to Baldessari. A 37-6 dead he got. We were two and a half tenths off. Bear in mind, that was our first lap of the circuit. So definitely room to improve. But we're into Q2 for the final race of the season. This qualifying session being the most important of the career mode yet. First lap then, we're about two tenths off, which I think I can take. That's Marquez's time. Baldessari hasn't set a time yet in this session. But of course, Baldessari did set a 37.6 in practice. He might improve on that, but we're going to go for around the delta we did have uh, in that third practice session. But we only lost really time in that third sector. We were pretty much nailed on uh, to be round about Marquez's time in those first two sectors. Let's have a look at the time. I mean, we've improved by nearly a tenth there. So that's a solid bank lap to start with. We've got time for... Two, maybe three more laps. So we could get pole here and that would be great. But beat Baldessari really is the main objective. But ultimately, beating Baldessari usually means beating him to pole. Oh, this could be a good lap. As you can see, the delta is very impressive. I don't know where we've gained the time to be honest. Just a little bit neater around the lap and that can always make all the difference. Not outbreaking yourself anywhere. But this is the sector I hate because I've got bad memories of last season falling off at this corner and effectively... Losing any hope we had in the championship against Dalla Porter in Moto3. Six tenths the delta now to Marquez. This could be a solid lap. Let's see what we do. I mean, we gained about a tenth and a half, didn't we, on Mar Marquez's time in the fourth sector. So this looks good. It could even be sub-37 if we really pushed hard. But it, it all depends on what Baldessari can do. It's not really Marquez we're battling with today. It's whoever is the quickest, I suppose. But Baldessari, I'm sure, put a good time in. But it's not done so yet. What's the time going to be? It's not quite a sub-37, but it's a mega lap of 37.042. What can Baldessari do to combat that? Wow. We've just raised the bar even more. What a great lap. That was a sub-37. Baldessari's nowhere to be seen on the times. I don't know where he is. Second, third, as far back on the grid uh, as he could be, I hope. And look at that. He's just ahead. Ah, P7 for Baldessari only at the moment. Well, I can't believe this. We're getting more and more pace out of this bike every single lap we go around. But if Baldessari stays P7, that suits me just fine. Hello from the Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia and welcome to the latest round of the Motorcycle World Championship for the Moto2 race. The skies over the track are clear of clouds and the latest weather reports forecast temperatures in line with the seasonal average. The most important race in our motorcycle career so far. Outscore Baldessari by eight points and we lift the Moto2 Championship. A pretty special accolade. But before we get into this, of course, it's been a fantastic season. I have really, really enjoyed it. Whatever the outcome, but it would put the icing on the cake, wouldn't it, to go and win that elusive championship. Now we are on pole. And Alex Marquez is second. Is Lorenzo Baldessari third? No, he's not. Let's find out where he is. Could this be... Easier than it seems for us. There's a few flex box bikes back there. He's a row behind his teammate. Seventh place for Lorenzo Baldessari. Of course, I don't need to tell you, if it stays like, if it stays like that, we win the championship comfortably. All we can do, because it's not in our hands, all we can do is stay where we are, win this Grand Prix, and we'll have to see what Baldessari does. If we win, and Baldessari finishes any lower than second... We win the championship. If we win and Baldessari finishes second, Baldessari wins the championship by two points. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is pressure. Really is. Because we've got the upper hand now, haven't we? Right. Well, we hope a few of our friends on the grid can do us a few favours. Nothing malicious, but something would be nice to hold them up a bit. Lights are out for this final race, the six laps here at the Valencia circuit. And it's not a very good start for us whatsoever. But Baldessari, I think he's still behind. I wouldn't know unless we saw the name tags. But great breaking into the first corner. Looks like Navarro's took the lead of this race. It's a bit of a shock. Now, I don't know if that's Baldessari or um, Fernandez we've just got past. Careful breaking into this corner. Our teammates broke away at the front. Really impressive start from him here. But we're down to P5. We need to make sure our teammate... Doesn't run away with this, P4, but the important thing is that Baldessari is nowhere to be seen at the moment. We'll just tap Marquez out a little bit wide there. But until 
We get... A ba Baldessari's off! Baldessari's crashed! He's down in 26th. He must have fell off at the first corner of that or had an absolutely terrible start. Wow. Well, last year we fell off and lost the championship <sighs> to Dalla Porta. He's in 23rd. It's Deci Antonio that's had a good start. Not Navarro. Blimey, that's a bit of a shock. So, basically, I know he's gaining places massively, but we've got 16 points. We need to outscore him by 7, so that means that he has to finish no higher than about about 7th or 8th. But where he is at the moment, I can't see him getting up to there, so this is definitely in our hands. But we need to, and on the one hand, try and push to make sure we do win this championship, even if uh, Bale, sorry pulls off a master stroke and gets up the field. But also keep it clean and do not fall off the bike like Baldessari did. Obviously, we don't know whether he did or not. It seems he did, though, because Navarro is down there as well. So I'd suggest that uh, Navarro did exactly what we told him to do. He gave us a helping hand at the start of this Grand Prix. And that then him and Baldessari had a collision. We've caught up quite nicely, actually, to Tom Luti and DJ Antonio. But we're not going to chuck it up the inside anytime soon. Just keeping it nice and balanced. But Luti does chuck it up the inside of DJ Antonio. And he's actually managed. I don't know how. He's practically morphed into DJ Antonio's bike there. But Luti, for the moment, does take the lead of this race. Remy Gardner up to fourth place. We don't quite take the fastest lap, actually. Tom Luti gets the fastest lap. Looks like that, well, Baldessari's off again. He's obviously fell off again because he was up to about 20th. So he can try all he wants. But I think this is our championship now. But we've said this before. We've got complacent before and we've lost it. So... I'm not going to say anything that confirms anything either way just yet. Dishy Antonio has a poor run out of there around the outside. Going to give him room on the inside. As I say, we don't need to be too aggressive uh, because we know that Baldessari is well down the field. But we've got a great run out of there. And just a bit composed. Nice race and we're up to P2 now. Now Tom Luti, who is first in this field. He's, he's been a little bit sporadic this season, Tom Luti. He's really had the pace at some points, but not consistently enough to challenge for the title. Although, really, myself, Baldessari, Navarro have been there throughout. Navarro really has struggled this second half of the season. But I think we've had a great season. And uh, hopefully we can finish it off with a win. Coming to the end of the penultimate lap then. And we are just behind Tom Luti. Not taking any stupid risks to try and overtake him. As you can see, Baldessari is down in 24th. If he leaves the door open, we might be tempted. But we're not going to try a silly move down the inside on Thomas Luti. But the championship is confirmed now. Definitely, I'd... We're not going to fall off in this next lap. It'd be ridiculous to, to say that. And even if we did, we're not going to fall down the grid massively. Uh, we'll probably fall to about 10th place. Let's not think about falling. Let's think about finishing this all on a high. I mean, after Phillip Island, personally, I thought it was all over. I really did, because Baldessari has been there and there about all season long. Now, probably this is his worst result of the season. He's bottled it like we did in Moto3 against Lorenzo Dalla Porta. It's another Lorenzo this time, but finally we're on the right side of that championship fight. Brilliant stuff. And hopefully this is our final race in Moto2. Surely you'd think with a Moto2 championship round our neck, we will get a MotoGP contract for next year. Be interested to see who we're riding for. Don't think we'll get any big contracts. Uh, I'd probably say one of the Ducati teams down the bottom of the grid. Um, yeah, probably one of them. But I'm not fussed. As long as we get into MotoGP, that's then a longer process to try and get to the top of the grid. But we're on the final lap. Just coming home, just behind Tom Luti. But we have got good pace here, so I think we might try it up the inside. No, we haven't really got the pace. I wouldn't want to try it and be stupid like that. But we are only seven points behind uh, Baldessari in the championship, so we don't need to launch up the inside for uh, first place. It'd look good, good on the score box and all that sort of thing to win the last race. But as long as we've got that trophy, it really doesn't matter. So going around the last few corners now, Navarro's had a shocking race. It's uh, been all us really here. Navarro's fell off, Baldessari's fell off, and uh, it's only us who remain, and that's the case for the championship. And we come round the last two corners now. We had heartbreak at Valencia this uh, that last year. Come round the last corner this year. We're on the right side of it. We haven't won the race, but personally, I'm not bothered because we have an accolade much bigger than that across the line, and I am the Moto2 champion. Oh, it's been a long season, but it doesn't, I don't know how good it sounds to say that. Absolutely fantastic stuff. There you go. It's confirmed at the bottom of the screen. Moto2 World Champion. A fantastic race. Alex Marquez actually stays on the bike for once. That's a surprise. 
but Baldessari, shocker for him. He just bottled it completely, and that confirms it. By 13 points, we are the winner of the Moto2 World Championship. Absolutely fantastic display. Why do the bloody wagons have to go past at this time? Dear me, an absolutely fantastic display from the Speed Up team overall. Myself and Navarro dominated anything that anybody else could put on in the championship. We are the winner of the Moto2 Championship. Honestly, I didn't think it would play out like that, but it did. We did fantastically. Only second place, but it really doesn't matter in the context of the race. Because Baldessari is going to be all miserable off the podium. We know we knew how that felt last season. But we expected it last season. A little bit like we expected not to win it today. But goodness me, we've done it. Ooh, hello. This is nice. The helmet comes off. Because on the bike, the Ego Speed Up bike, which we should practically pray for because it's been a fantastic motorcycle this season. Oh, I love this. Look at it. Look at this sequence. I love this. Oh, look at that trophy. We get to hold it aloft. And we are the winner of the Moto2 Championship. That's an awesome cutscene. I love that. Great bite the speed up's been this season. Hopefully we move on to a bigger beast next season. Let's find out what our offers are. For the fourth season of career mode. Unbelievable, we're already into that already. Great stuff though. Awesome. Right, so what's our favourite team? We want to ride. See, I might have charged my allegiance now. Oh. Stay with. Let's go Yamaha. And we do have one... Bloody hell. That's a massive opportunity. We've only been given one MotoGP contract, but bloody hell, we're going to take it. We are going to be with LCR Honda. That's huge. That's an absolutely fantastic uh, ride, really. We knock Cal Crutchlow off the grid. Feel a bit guilty about that. And we replace him, and our teammate is Takaki Nakagami. And that is a huge ride. Oh, we've got a win to test as well. Nice. But that is a huge ride on the uh, on that bike. And we're now in the big leagues. Let's just check we have not. Oh, no. Cal is still there. For some reason, it did. But for some reason, said that Cal wasn't there. But we are now in the big leagues. The MotoGP Championship. We have the same bike. Bear in mind, I think. Um, no. Hang on a bit. No. we. That's why it says that Nakagami is our teammate. Basically... Cal Crutchlow's on the full-spec bike. The full-spec bike that Marquez uh, and Lorenzo have. Myself and Nakagami are on the bike that's a little bit slower. Um, so we are part of the Idemitsu-sponsored uh, team rather than the Castro one that Cal Crutchlow is in. But still a very solid team and uh, very excited to be part of that team. So we've got some winter tests at Malaysia. That will be well worth taking um, to, to try and get into the season and see how we get on. And then we start it all over again. We go through the calendar from Qatar through to Valencia. And we are now in the big leagues of MotoGP. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly did. And we're back on Tuesday with the uh, yeah with the MotoGP season. That's exciting. Really exciting news. I hope you guys have enjoyed this season. It's been an absolutely fantastic one. And we are now where we want to be on a MotoGP bike. I've been TIJ Game. Thank you so much for your company today, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye for now.